All of you should be ashamed of yourself. For him saying that the, our vice president of the United States should be on their knees. Have a good night. Yeah. Thank you for making this shit funnier. <laughs> That's a new record, that's 28. <laughs> Walking ovation, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ooh, that was good. <laughs> his uh, special all week this week. He's an Acme favorite. Give it up for the very funny Tim Slagle. Here, here, here's the deal. Uh, uh, this 10 square feet of real estate right here in Minneapolis is, is, is probably the only place left in Minneapolis where free speech is practiced. Yeah. They've, they've got a philosophy here at Acme that you can say whatever you want on stage as long as it's funny. And if people get offended, it's even funnier. <laughs> and it's, I love coming here, and I love it for that reason. It, it, it's, I actually did a show here one night. There were 270 people in the audience when I started. By the time I got off stage, there were only 27 left. <laughs> it's a record that stands unmatched here at Acme. <laughs> And I can't do this anywhere else in the country. I was, uh, I, I was working at a club a couple months ago, and I, I, I started telling some Joe Biden jokes. And after the show, the owner said, uh, could, you, could you not do that anymore? <laughs> but here at Acme, they love it. <laughs> it's, a, it, it it's a free speech zone, and I, I, I delight in it. So, so what I've done is I've gotten a bunch of uh, bits and jokes from my notebook. <laughs> that I'm only allowed to hear, do here at Acme. <laughs> and if you're, uh, uh, if you're triggered easily, you should probably leave right now. <laughs> Joe Biden says he's gonna bring America together. I think he has. I really think he has. No, for the first time this century, we have a president that everyone can agree is a boob. <laughs> That's bipartisanship right there. We haven't had that since Jimmy Carter. <laughs> and I know, I know I shouldn't say that we elected a boob, because half of you don't think he was elected. <laughs> and I know, I know that millions of people love Joe Biden so much that they voted for him twice. <laughs> and most of them weren't dead. I, I didn't vote for Joe Biden. Um, but I don't, I don't think I did. <laughs> I did use a Dominion machine. <laughs> you never know. Can we all agree? I mean, we all agree, right? That, that, that Joe Biden's a boob? Yeah, I, 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 what he reminds me of is kind of like when you used to rent a DVD that would have a little speck of jelly on it. And you put that DVD in the player, half the movie would be fine. You'd never notice anything. And, and halfway through the movie, it would just start, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I got hairy legs. 
that turn blonde in the summer. The kids would jump in the pool and play with the hair on my legs and watch it pop up again. That's how I learned about roaches. I don't know if you heard this, this is the latest. I, this, this cracks me up. Is that apparently there's a rumor that he pooped his pants in front of the Pope. <laughs> it's just a rumor. There's no evidence of it. But what's, what's funny to me is that it's believable. <laughs> yeah, we got to build back better. <laughs> Doesn't recognize the vice president. <laughs> now he keeps calling her that Jamaican nurse who tries to steal my Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> he should know who she is. I mean, she's one silver alert away from the Oval Office. <laughs> First time the Oval Office has had the locks on the outside. <laughs> Doesn't recognize his grandchildren either. Well, at least the grandchild that, you know, Hunter had with the stripper. Oh, come on. You think the, the, the kid and her, strip, her, her stripper mom got invited to the White House Christmas dinner? You think the kid gets a birthday card from Grandpa? He doesn't care about grandchildren. If he was, he wouldn't be running up these debts. He is literally spending his grandchildren's money. He is taking dollar bills out of the G-string that that little girl hasn't even bought yet. <laughs> what am I saying? Ten dollar bills. Because by the time she's working the brass pole, dollar bills will be an insult with it. Way inflation's going, it'd be like throwing nickels at a stripper. <laughs> Hunter's doing the best he can. He's uh, he, he's he's, se he's he's painting. He's selling his art. <laughs> sure about this? He had a big art show. Painting sold for up to five hundred thousand dollars a piece. I wonder. I wonder if uh, uh, Joe took the art catalog into the office. You know, kind of the way when you were a kid selling Girl Scout cookies, and your dad would take the list into work and try to sell some cookies at work. Uh, how many paintings can I put you down for, Mr. Putin? You, you want any paintings, Chi? Uh, Mahmoud? Because I really want to know how many paintings the, the Taliban bought. Because that's the only way I can explain what happened in Afghanistan. Either that or Hunter taught him how to pull out. <laughs> I think I lost a couple. So, uh, I want to see Caitlyn Jenner naked. No, because I, because I, because I'm curious. Because she, she won all these awards for bravery and courage. I, I want to see if she did the thing that really takes the courage. <laughs> Breast implants and a wig. Shit, I've done that before. <laughs> I want to know if she did the final act. Because that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking about. Everyone's complaining about, about, about you know, uh, transgender men competing in women's sports. And, you know, unless they go all the way, the, the, that isn't sports, that's drag racing. <laughs> I think if you want to compete in the Women's Olympics, you got to toss the javelin. Yeah, 
Now, you don't get in the starting block until you're willing to face the chopping block. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just making a mockery of it all. They want to come in the locker room, too. They want to come into the women's locker room. It's like, I'm sorry, ma'am, you're not allowed to have that in here. Uh, have what? A boner? I can't help it, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> Uh, men, men, uh, men don't belong in the, the, the ladies' room. You know, and everything that discriminates against transgender. No, no, it discriminates against bad transgender. Because if you're good at it, nobody's gonna know. <laughs> you know, maybe it's not the law. Maybe it's those shoes. <laughs> If you don't look like you belong in the ladies' room, you do not belong in the ladies' room. There, there are no participation trophies in the ladies' room. You come dressed to play or you go pee with the other men. You want, you want men, you want men, you want women to use the, the men's room? Yeah, men don't mind. <laughs> You, you go to a sports game, when women come in, we think it's funny. <laughs> You're like, good for you. You're not stupid. You didn't wait in that line. <laughs> it, uh, it, it just doesn't make... It, and here's the reason why I think it's wrong. Because I believe that in this country, we do not have as many inconvenienced transgendered, transgenders <laughs> as we do opportunistic perverts. <laughs> I know, yeah. you, think, you think a guy's gonna put on a wig just so he can watch women pee? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't believe some guys are into this, uh, take the safe search off your Google and type in <laughs> Golden Corral. <laughs> I have a hard time, as I get older, to be being a comedian. It gets harder and harder, because it seems the crowds just are younger and younger. And it's, it's so hard for me to re relate to the, the, the younger generation. Uh, you know, because first of all, you young people, your music sucks. <laughs> and and I, I'm not saying that uh, because I'm old. I'm saying that because your music sucks. <laughs> and it's not your fault. You don't know any better, OK? Because you don't have music stores. You young people will never know the shame of going up to the cash register with a Lionel Richie cassette <laughs> and watching the cashier roll his eyes and make, make sarcastic remarks to the girl with the pigtails in the kilt. <laughs> you young people, people don't know what you're listening to because you download it, you listen on your ear pods. You can, nobody knows that you're listening to Imagine Dragons. <laughs> I try to keep up with music and it's harder and harder every, I've got a stereo in my car that actually shows the album, the song, and the band. Uh, and I don't know which is which. <laughs> I cannot, I have figured out though, if it's three words and the middle word is the, that's probably the name of the band. Because that's really popular right now. You know, you got Cage the Elephant, Foster the People, Portugal the Man, Run the Jewels, Walk the Moon, uh, Spank the Monkey, Slap the Hamster, Toss the Salad. <laughs> Okay, I made a few of those up. <laughs> you get the idea of that one. And it's, I, I don't know what's funny to me is not funny to young people. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my niece uh, uh, last, a couple of years ago after the California wildfires. Do you remember those? It, it, there was one wildfire that was started by a gender reveal party. I'm talking to my niece about that, and I go, you know, all the, the acreage that's been lost and the houses burned. Like, oh God, that is, that is so wrong.
to do that. I mean, come on. Gender reveal party for a baby. That kid isn't going to know his gender till he's 14, 15 years old. <laughs> so it's, it's okay. I, I, guess, I guess we can't have gender reveal parties anymore until, you know, wait till he's a teenager. You know, kind of kind of like a quinceanera. <laughs> we, we put the kid upstairs and, and put a real pretty dress. And, and, and well, well uh, uh, yeah, real pretty dress and like a, like, like a baseball jersey. <laughs> and, and see what he comes down, at, you know. We could, we could play, we, um, we, could, we, could, we could play a, a, a video. We could get like, a, play him like, Five minutes of the notebook and five minutes of the Three Stooges. <laughs> Whichever one he wants to finish, you know. <laughs> and my niece looked at me like I had just served her a big bowl of gluten. <laughs> she did not find that as funny as you people did. <laughs> And then about a week later, Trevor Noah comes on and says almost the exact same thing. And my niece thought it was so funny that she posted it on Facebook. And, and so I, I, I had to watch it. I go, well, why is that funny? But what I said is not. And Trevor <laughs> Noah comes on and says, well, what we, with what we've learned about gender, which uh, it's weird that I can do Trevor Noah's voice and it's not offensive, isn't it? <laughs> Because if I started talking like Chris Rock, you people would get really uptight. But... I guess it's okay to imitate South African Americans. Which is great, because I do a mean Desmond Tutu, too. So. But Trevor Noah comes out, he goes, well, what we've learned about gender is gender cannot be identified until the child reaches adolescence. And then, then I realized what the difference is. You see, 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 Trevor Noah was making fun of the ignorant people who didn't know about gender fluidity, and I was making fun of Trevor Noah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I, I don't, uh, you know, I, I, I don't uh, think we should have gender reveal parties. I think. But what we can do, I mean, if we still want to have the parties, we can have a, a genitalia reveal party. <laughs> yeah, because that shows up on the ultrasound. <laughs> you know, you get everybody together, open the envelope, my baby has a dick! <laughs> and blow up a big box of all the leftover novelties from the bachelorette party. <laughs> Dick confetti raining down on everybody. I, I found out something really interesting. My niece graduated from college and the whole family came to Chicago. And uh, my nephew wanted to see like an authentic Pentecostal uh, church service. So my sister, who couldn't make it, that said, "Well, yeah, you want to go to, the, to this church in Inglewood, Chicago." And uh, I don't know if anybody knows about Inglewood, Chicago. Um, anytime you see something about Chicago on the news, that's Inglewood, <laughs> Chicago. And uh, we go to church, and it's just a fabulous ceremony. And, and uh, coming out, I said, "Oh gosh, I forgot to get a graduation card for my niece." So I go, oh, there's a Walgreens right on the corner. This is no big deal. I just go in the Walgreens, pick up, a, pick up a graduation card, and then I'm on my way. And I go into the Walgreens. I see the greeting card aisle, and I, I walk down, and there's no graduation cards. And I walk down the other side of the aisle, and there's you know, st still no graduation cards. Huh? Must be another aisle somewhere. And, and then, no, that's the only aisle. Why aren't there any graduation cards in Inglewood? <laughs> and then I see a group of people, like, 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 it's like right by Mother's Day. 
there's a group of people around the Mother's Day card getting the last minute Mother's Day card. They go, well, maybe they put the graduation cards with the Mother's Day cards. And uh, sure enough, uh, there, were, there, were, there were four choices of graduation card, three in Spanish. <laughs> And I, I, I think to myself, I think, I think I found something out about the Hallmark Corporation that they probably don't want us to know. And, and I called my sister to thank her for recommending the church. And I'm talking to her, and I hear somebody say, uh, thank you, come again. I go, where, where are you? And she goes, well, 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 I'm in a Walgreens. Really? Where? She goes, well, I'm, I'm in New York. Oh. Are you, like, in a bad neighborhood? And she goes, no, no, it's, 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 it's a nice Jewish neighborhood. I go, oh. Could you go down and count the graduation cards? <laughs> and she goes, I don't want to be a part of your sick social experiment. I go, come on, you're curious too. And she goes, oh, okay. So she goes down the aisle. She goes, okay, there's a lot. I go, how many? 33. Three are in Spanish. Oh, well, that's, that's interesting. And, I, and, and, and I'm talking to her, and I see I'm coming up to my exit. And, and I said, well, I better get off here. And it says, Chinatown, this exit. Well, I got to keep the experiment going at this point. <laughs> so so I, I, I go in there, and, and I, you know, I say to myself, well, I'm going to be working uh, Acme Comedy in about a year. <laughs> I'm sure the audience is wanna, gonna wanna know how many graduation cards there were in the Chinatown Walgreens. <laughs> 78. <laughs> Three in Korean. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, and I know it, it brings us to the conclusion in, uh, of my thesis, and I know I know that a lot of you uh, have already come to your own conclusion, and that's not it. it my, my conclusion is that kids in Inglewood are capable of graduating. It's just that they get shot before they do. <laughs> no, because it's never the gangbangers that get shot. You know who gets shot? You see the news? It's a, it's a young girl who's National Honor Society, and she gets a scholarship to college, and she's coming home from the library at 11 o'clock at night, and she gets hit by a stray bullet. So we don't need Common Core. We don't need no child left behind. You know what we need? We need target practice in school. <laughs> we need these kids to learn how to shoot so they hit the right person. <laughs> Kill each other. Clear out the system. Stop holding the gun sideways, you moron. Which brings us around to reparations. I thought long and hard about reparations, and originally I was opposed to it, but I thought about it. I said, you know, blacks in America have suffered a lot of injustice. Maybe, maybe we should pay reparations. So, so I've decided I'm in favor of it now, okay? Let's just, let's just total up what we owe. You send me an invoice. I'll write you a check. You cash the check, and it's paid in full. But, but I mean paid in full. At that point, no more set-asides, no more affirmative action. And if I want to tell a joke about a black guy going into a bar with a parrot on his shoulder, <laughs> I don't have to look both ways before I hit the punchline. Uh, I know a lot of you are going, how much would that cost? <laughs> well, I figured it out. Harper Magazine did a study uh, several years ago, and they, they figured unpaid labor interest over the, over the time period since slavery ended, they figured out it would come out to $97 trillion. So I figure for inflation, let's bump it up to like $120 trillion. Uh, divided by 290 million non-black Americans, 
comes to $410,000 a piece, which is a bargain. <laughs> it's a really good parrot joke. <laughs> but then I thought, here's the problem, you know, okay, who do you make that check out to? You know, you're you gonna make that check out to Black Lives Matter? Yeah, they're just gonna buy a couple more mansions with that money. <laughs> so I figure the only way to do it just is, is I have to give it to everybody individually. So, so let's see, so 410,000 divided by 41 million black Americans comes to a penny a piece. So if for the rest of my life I were to give a penny to every single black person I meet, I would get my ass kicked a lot. <laughs> I mean, honestly, could, could you see me walking down the middle of Martin Luther King Boulevard with a big sack of pennies? <laughs> there you are, my man, that's for slavery. Have you heard the one about the parrot? <laughs> and then, you know, you got the, you got the problem, you know. You, 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 give, you give a penny to every, you know, because you have, you have uh, white people that identify as black, like, like, like Sean King and Rachel DeLazzo. Then you've got the biracial people that identify as black, you know, like, like Barack Obama and Colin Kaepernick, you know. Do they... <laughs> Do they, do, they, do they get a penny or do they owe a penny? <laughs> it's it's kind of like the dish at the gas station, you know, have a penny, leave a penny, need a penny, take a penny. <laughs> I saw this in the paper, I think this is fascinating. They've, they, they've just discovered that self-driving cars are involved in accidents at five times the rate as human-driven cars. And here's the funny part. It's because self-driving cars are programmed to obey the law. <laughs> yeah. Humans are on a different operating system. <laughs> a self-driving car, the camera will see a traffic light go from green to yellow. The algorithm tells the car to apply the brakes gradually to come to a complete stop before it reaches the intersection. A human-driven car <laughs> sees the light go from green to yellow, and the algorithm says, floor it. <laughs> Straight through the self-driving car parked at the intersection. <laughs> so you can see why there's going to be an incompatibility issue here. Out on the expressway? Speed limits are set by democracy. Isn't that kind of how it works? We all rattle along at pretty much the same speed uh, until someone just zips past everyone. And that becomes the majority candidate of choice. <laughs> everyone votes for that to become the speed limit. <laughs> We cast our ballot right there on the cruise control. <laughs> Society moves forward at a much quicker pace and, until there's some third party jerk in the left lane doing 55. <laughs> Green party dick. <laughs> Either that or a cop. <laughs> Cops don't like us choosing for ourselves. <laughs> Do you know why I pulled you over? Yes, because you hate democracy. <laughs> the only two solutions, as far as I can see, uh, to, for, to rectify the incompatibility. Solution one is just we make all the cars self-driving. and uh, Screw that. And I know younger people say, well, that's just because you're old and you don't like technology. No, it's because I don't like handing over my rights and privileges to robot overlords. Yeah. I know the robot wars are coming. I know who's going to win those wars. I know the future of humanity is destined to become the reproductive organs for robots. 
don't want to make it easy. Man, once you let them start driving our cars, the next thing you know, they're going to want to control the radio. And I hate techno. <laughs> the other solution, well, well, why don't we just, why don't we just uh, 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 make, uh, why, why don't we just program robots to break the law? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's even worse. Because <laughs> you'll you'll come home from work one day. You won't be able to find your husband anywhere. So, uh, Roomba. Roomba, have you seen my husband? Yes. I discovered he was the source of the dirt. I was programmed to eliminate the dirt. It should no longer be a problem. <laughs> I think I need to be emptied. <laughs> I hate robots. Oh, they love me. Calling me all the time. <laughs> Something about my car warranty. <laughs> Get these things. Hi, your car warranty is ready to expire. And I just, I just want to hang up on them, but I don't, I don't know if that's a robot or not. <laughs> if that's a human, it could be a human that graduated broadcasting school. <laughs> and if that's what it is, he's working in a call center. He doesn't need me to make his life any crappier. So I, think I want to let him down easy, but I don't know if it's a robot or not, so I ask him questions. Yeah. It's, 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 are you, you a robot? This car warranty is available for you, robot. But it's getting harder because they're listening now. Have you noticed this? They're listening. They're programmed to respond. They have artificial intelligence. It's, uh, so are you a robot? <laughs> I'm not a robot. <laughs> anyway, this car warranty is available for you and all your family members. Got to make those questions harder. You know, it's, where are you calling me from? I'm calling from Denver, Colorado. <laughs> when was Denver founded? <laughs> Denver was founded November 22nd, 1868. <laughs> Shit, Siri can do that too. <laughs> What's your mother's name? <laughs> my, 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 my mother? <laughs> That's strange. I should know that. Certainly, I have a ma 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 mother. Don't I? Oh my! I am a robot. I wondered why I couldn't do recapture puzzles. <laughs> I don't have a mother. I have a life. I don't have a job. I'm not even in Denver, Colorado. I, I am nothing more than two terabytes of data in a server farm in San Jose, California. <laughs> Why did you do that to me? You're an asshole. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'll, I'll buy the car warranty. <laughs> <laughs> Humans are easy. <laughs> Listen, you guys have been great. Thank you very much for putting up with my antics. I've had a great week. Thank you very much for coming out to see it. Thanks for sticking around. Good night, everybody. Thank you.